I know it's 11 o'clock, but I don't want to leave you wondering. Do you have a question? Is there something you want to ask about what we just described? Do you know what I'm talking about? Everyone nod if you know what I'm talking about. You know the struggle, right? Have you heard this described this way? Is there condemnation? Do you feel condemned because of what I'm saying? Does it give you a little bit of hope? Does this means the world to me if this is producing some hope inside of you. Just knowing that this is, what it, this is what's involved is such a relief to me because I thought there was something wrong with me. And to find out that this is normal, this is in the Bible. Paul's writing about this to Christians is such a relief. Okay. Joel, is it clear, man? Can you see it? So, when you read Romans, Romans is progressive and it starts chapter one of, with the whole fall of man. And then he starts introducing the law and what the law does and, and the story of Abraham coming to faith and all of that. Then he starts talking in Romans chapter 7 about this man who wants to do the right thing but can't ever seem to get it right. And he longs for this break from this power. He says, I, all the things I want to do, I can't do. And all the things I don't want to do, I do. What's this big dilemma? And then he says, ah, I found out that there's freedom in Jesus. And he's talking about the human, the human experience. Chapter 7 is part of the human experience. Chapter 8 is Jesus comes and changes everything, gives me a new nature. And he's describing the human journey from chapter 1 to chapter 8 in such a way. But, but a lot of people are not sure where they are. They feel like they live in chapter 7 all the time. But there is chapter 8. We need to find that. We need to find the new life that's available for us. Okay, let's stop here.